In hydraulic calculations for fire sprinkler systems, one of the most critical questions is, how many sprinklers should be assumed to activate during a fire? This assumption directly affects pipe sizing, required flow rate, and pressure distribution throughout the system. In this video, we'll walk through the basic concepts of selecting and laying out the design area using the density area method, which applies to standard spray, extended coverage, and CMDA sprinklers. Imagine a room filled with combustible materials and plenty of oxygen, but no sprinkler system. If a fire breaks out and no action is taken, it will rapidly spread and engulf the entire space. However, when a fire sprinkler system is installed, we aim to control it, limiting its spread and containing it within a defined area. The area where the fire is expected to be contained is known as the design area or the area of sprinkler operation. This area is determined through extensive fire testing and is based on the occupancy hazard classification. For storage occupancies, it also depends on the commodity configuration. NFPA 13 compiles these parameters into detailed tables, figures, and design criteria to guide system designers. For example, according to Table 192311 in NFPA 13, in light hazard occupancies with a wet pipe system and a horizontal ceiling with the height of 21 feet, if the sprinkler flow rate meets the minimum design density of 0.1 gallons per minute per square foot, the fire is expected to be contained within a 1,500 square foot area. We can estimate the minimum required flow rate of a sprinkler system by knowing two key parameters, the density and the design area. To do this, we simply multiply the required density by the design area. For example, in extra hazard group 1 occupancies, NFPA 13 specifies a minimum density of 0.3 gallons per minute per square foot and a design area of 2,500 square feet. Based on these values, the minimum required flow rate would be 750 gallons per minute. In real-world scenarios, the actual system flow rate will typically be higher to account for minor and major losses, such as friction loss in pipes and fittings. However, this estimation provides a useful benchmark to verify whether the calculated flow rate meets the minimum design criteria. Another important application of the design area is determining the number of sprinklers expected to activate during a fire incident. When sprinklers are uniformly spaced, we can calculate this by dividing the design area by the coverage area of each sprinkler, typically determined using the S by L method. For example, if the design area is 1,500 square feet and each sprinkler covers 100 square feet, then the number of sprinklers in operation would be 15. It's important to note that if the result is not a whole number, we always round up. For instance, if the design area remains 1,500 square feet, but each sprinkler covers 120 square feet, dividing 1,500 by 120 gives us 12.5. In this case, we round up to 13 sprinklers to meet the design requirements. Once we determine the number of sprinklers expected to activate during a fire, the next question is, which sprinklers should we assume will operate? In other words, what is the shape and layout of the design area? In general, the design area is assumed to be a rectangular shape with the length of the rectangle parallel to the branch lines, measuring at least 1.2 times the square root of the total design area. NFPA 13 requires this because branch lines are typically smaller in diameter than cross mains, which leads to higher friction loss. This reduces the available water discharge along the branch line path, making it more vulnerable to fire spread. 
By extending the design area in this direction, we account for the worst-case hydraulic conditions and help ensure the system can control the fire effectively. For example, as shown in this figure, let's assume that sprinklers 1, 2, and 3 are activated at the beginning of a fire. Hydraulic calculations reveal that sprinkler 3 discharges about 13% more water than sprinkler 2. This difference is due to the combined flow rate of sprinklers 1 and 2, approximately 46.6 gallons per minute, which causes greater friction loss along the most remote branch line. In contrast, the 27.4 gallons per minute flowing toward sprinkler 3 encounters less resistance. As friction loss increases along a path, the available pressure at the sprinkler head decreases, resulting in lower discharge. And with less water being delivered, the fire can spread more easily in that direction. Another important aspect of the design area is its location. It's essential to remember that the ultimate goal of defining the design area is to determine the appropriate pipe sizing. Ensuring the sprinkler system can effectively control the fire based on the available pressure and flow rate from the water supply. If we select the design area near the water supply and size the pipes based on that location, the system may fail to perform if a fire starts farther away. In such cases, the sprinklers may not receive enough pressure to discharge the required amount of water. That's why, like many other engineering disciplines, we follow a worst-case design approach. NFPA 13 requires that the design area be located in the hydraulically most remote part of the system. Most of the time, this remote area is simply the farthest point from the water supply. However, in some cases, a section closer to the supply may become hydraulically remote, especially if it has a higher hazard classification or if the sprinklers cover a larger area, resulting in greater water demand. In this example, we're locating the design area within an ordinary hazard group 1 occupancy, where 70 standard spray sprinklers are uniformly spaced. The spacing between sprinklers along the branch line, or S, is 13 feet, and the spacing between branch lines, or L, is 10 feet. The first step in determining the design area is to calculate the number of sprinklers that are expected to activate during a fire. To do this, we divide the design area, which is 1,500 square feet, by the coverage area of each sprinkler. In this case, the coverage area is 130 square feet, calculated using the S times L method. Dividing 1,500 by 130 gives us approximately 11.5 sprinklers, which we round up to 12 sprinklers. Since NFPA 13 requires the design area to be located in the hydraulically most remote part of the system, We'll select these 12 sprinklers on the left side of the project, which is farthest from the water supply. Next, we need to calculate the number of sprinklers on the most remote branch line. We've already reviewed the formula for determining the length of the design area. It should be noted when the spacing between sprinklers along the branch line is equal, we can find the number of sprinklers on that branch line by dividing the length of the design area by S. If the result is not a whole number, we round up to ensure full coverage. Now that we've calculated the total number of sprinklers in the design area, as well as the number of sprinklers on the most remote branch line, we can begin locating them on the layout. When sprinklers are installed at the same elevation, have equal coverage areas, and protect the same hazard occupancy, the farthest sprinkler is the hydraulically most remote. This is because the water traveling to that sprinkler experiences the greatest pressure loss, making it the most challenging point for the system to supply. By selecting the other three adjacent sprinklers on the most remote branch line, we complete the total number of sprinklers required on that line. 
Since we need to reach a total of 12 sprinklers in the design area, we should select four additional sprinklers from the second and four sprinklers from the third most remote branch line. As we've seen, this example was relatively simple and straightforward, featuring a rectangular shaped design area. In the next video, we'll review additional NFPA 13 requirements related to design area selection and explore more complex scenarios.